Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to this walkthrough of the Tolku Oracle. I first found out about the Tolku Oracle when Carla, the creator, reached out to me to see if I might be interested in sharing the deck with you guys in a walkthrough. And that is what we are gonna be doing today. It's important to note that at the time I'm filming this and sharing it with you guys, this deck is currently funding on Kickstarter right now. So please keep in mind that this is a prototype deck. So it's one of the sample decks that Carla was able to get from her printer. It does not have all the same embellishments that the Kickstarter deck will have and we will talk about quality and all of that good stuff as we dive in. I also don't yet have a physical copy of the guidebook but I have loaded it onto my Kindle which is why this is here um, and the guidebook I can tell you guys I've already read almost 100 pages of it and it is absolutely stunningly beautifully written and there's a lot of heart and soul in this project so I'm really excited to share it with you guys. Now before we dive into the deck just a little bit about Carla and what Carla does. Carla is the creator of Tolku Jewelry which is a line of amulets and when I first found out about this I was like wait huh I'm not sure so I went and looked at her website um, which I will have linked in the description box down below it is tolkujewels.com and I read a little bit more about the amulets she creates and their story and the the potency that she's really put behind them and it's a really beautiful story there's actually a full video documentary like a, like a short documentary um, that really goes through her process of having these created and it's it's really cool I will also link that documentary in the description box down below so that you can check that out also for my own experience or from my own experience I should say amulet is a word that I associate with very potent um, intention based wearable or carryable items talismans and and um amulets are words that to me describe something that has a lot of weighty kind of magic and intention behind it now i don't know that that's entirely where carla's coming from although i do know there's a lot of weighty intention behind it i don't know if she would associate it with magic i'm just sharing you my own sort of perspective and I wanted to share this with you. I've talked about this before. This is actually a personal um, amulet that was made for me by a dear friend. It has a lot to do with strength and courage. This feels so full of magic and so weighty. Um, and I really get the feeling from looking through the Tolku jewelry website that that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about like kitschy um, costume jewelry or jewelry that you would just wear for an occasion. It feels very intentional. And this Oracle deck is based off of all of these amulets. And that's just kind of a cool backstory that I think is really interesting to know. So let me just share the card that Carla sent with this package up a little closer so you can see it. It's really, really beautiful. Um, all of her contact information is there. I'm going to just set that to the side and we're going to dive into the cards. But look, this should give you a bit of a idea about what we're expecting from the artwork. It's really breathtaking. It's very, um, it's very earthy um, and very full of spirit, which you'll see as we dive through the cards. Let's get into it. So while I get this out, I'm just going to share with you a couple of cardstock sort of specifications for those of you who geek out on details like that, like I do. So the Kickstarter version of the deck is going to have 350 GSM cardstock um, and it will be 53 cards in the deck. I believe this is going to be the same size of the deck um, and it will have brown glittery golden sorry, dark brown matte edges with glitter. Um, so it sounds like it's gonna be a really stunning edging on the deck once it is produced for the Kickstarter campaign. So it sounds really, really lovely. I will tell you that this prototype deck that I have, it feels very flexible and it feels like a rose petal finish. Um, she did call it satin matte lamination for the Kickstarter version and the backs, or she just said on one side, I don't know if it's going to be the fronts or the backs, but she mentioned spot UV varnish, which I believe is spot gloss uh, or what we know is spot gloss. So little shiny spots. I don't know if that's going to be on the art side or on the also art side, but on the or on the back of the deck. Um, speaking of the backs, can we just talk about how freaking beautiful these are? Look at that. 
absolutely no glare, which is awesome. Um, and we are going to zoom in and go through the art. Um, and we all also will be talking about the guidebook, which again, I have a uh, manuscript loaded on my Kindle. This is, it will be a, a three-dimensional <laughs> guidebook. Um, it will have 276 pages, including the cover, and will also have some spot UV varnish on it and a satin matte lamination and be perfect bound. Um, the guidebook, you guys, again, I'm going to try to hold off until a little bit later, but oh my gosh, it's, it's again, it's very, very beautifully written. So one of the things that attracted me to this deck was that, let's zoom this in, there we go. One of the things that attracted me to this deck was that the, there's a lot of familiar symbols and terms to me. So I have um, a background in yoga and I also have spent time working with chakras and both of those things I feel like come into play here, but that's not all this is by any stretch. It is a very eclectic deck. I feel like there are lots of little tidbits from various spiritual paths, from various cultures, and I really enjoy that about this deck. Now, with that said, we're going to dive through card by card and look at it together. Um, a couple things worth noting, there are suits, I believe. Let me just double check that. So within this deck, there are symbols, there are totems, and there are archetypes. So we're gonna go through those sections together. The first section is the symbols. And that's what we're gonna go through now. I'm just gonna have my Kindle here handy because the table of contents is here and will remind me when we're switching categories. So starting off in symbols, we have Muladhara Chakra. This is the root chakra. And I love this like raven here and this big strong column, really pretty. Next we have this Vadistana Chakra, which is the sacral chakra. This is watery and emotional and I love this. I love the color we have here in this central symbol. I believe this may be one of the amulets there that we see in the background. And there's these like little almost like fairy-like spiritual being shapes I see sometimes. Next we have the Manipura chakra which is the solar plexus chakra and here we have what looks to me to be a lion and a flame. It's a very intuitive style of artwork that I feel like really is good if you like sinking in. Um, I love that about this. And I just noticed. Yeah, like in this card, there's like this face in the background. It's, it's really interesting because there's a lot of layers to the artwork. Okay, sorry, let me get back on track. All right, so then we have the Anahata Chakra, which is the heart chakra. Um, and here we have that sort of flowering energy, especially out the top of the head with this literal flower blossom and a little heart over there. It's almost like nature collage. I don't know how else to describe it. It's a lot more like um, blended together than some types of collage that I've seen. And I just, I love it. The Visuddha Chakra, which is the throat chakra. I probably said that wrong. I'm going through that too quickly. Sorry. I just want to back up a little. Yeah, there's like this blue flower. There's this sort of peaceful figure at the center. Again, it's like a lot of semi-transparent layers and it's just really soft. The Ajana Chakra or the third eye. That bold like violet color there in the center. And the Sahasrara, Sahasrara Chakra, which is the crown chakra. So beautiful. Tat Tvam Asi. I don't know what this is. We're going to actually go to that page in the book. I know I said I was going to share the book later. I lied. Um, well, let's go to Tat Vam Asi is Sanskrit for I am that. Um, I don't know all the Sanskrit, just the Sanskrit that I was using more regularly. Uh, so forgive my pronunciations, they're probably terrible. But this is the mantra that represents the interconnectivity of all beings and the awareness that everything in our experience is a reflection of ourselves. I love that, it's really beautiful. Sankalpa, this is a concept I'm really familiar with and one that is a huge part of my path and practice, particularly my self-worth practice. Um, a Sankalpa is, I wonder what she says about it actually, let's just see. The guidebook is so in-depth, it's amazing. Uh, a Sanskrit word describing resolution and determination. To me, it's so much deeper than that, but determination is a good word. It's it's like, um, it's a lot like positive manifestation or um, law of attraction kind of work in a way, but it's just something that you work with deeply and over a long period of time, at least in my experience and in my practice. And it's really beautiful. So I love that this is in here. It's just one of the things that I love about this deck. Ritam, let's take a look. 
uh, the Sanskrit word for truth and rhythm. So it shows us the power of being part of the rhythm of the universe. Oh, I love that. And I love this like sort of owl face in the background you see and this path. It's really beautiful. Moksha. I love this. Okay, I'm really bad. Is this like a hawk? I'm really bad with birds of prey in general. Moksha is the Sanskrit word for liberation and release. It is a great life goal for Hindus and signifies a treasured gift of grace learned born from deep and long dedication to one's practice. Achieving moksha means that one has finally gained liberation from the cycle of death and rebirth and is at one with the entire universe. I really think that's beautiful. Next we have Shiva Shakti. Shiva is the transcendent self, the masculine principle of consciousness. He is the primordial empty stillness from which all creations are born, made manifest only through the dynamic power of Shakti. Shakti is the creative feminine principle, the great mother energy that animates and nourishes the universe. She arises from the dark void of Shiva. There is no conscious life without the union of these two primordial fo forces. So this really speaks to that uh, balance of masculine feminine divine masculine and divine feminine energy and it's really beautiful I love this it looks like a it looks like a statue and a lotus here and the statue I don't know if it's two statues layered together or if it really is one but it looks like the two two different statues are embracing really really pretty Sat Chit Ananda again please forgive my pronunciations Sat, Chit, Ananda is the combination of three Sanskrit words, Sat, Chit, and Ananda, which means wisdom, consciousness, and bliss. How beautiful is that? Sat, Chit, Ananda is the pure, undifferentiated state of wholeness. Some might call it enlightenment. To reside in this higher state is the experience of pure bliss. The state of Sat, Chit, Ananda is what all meditation practice aspires to. At the same time, it is ever-present in the core of our beings. Sat, Chit, Ananda is the natural expression of our hearts. And I love how this seems to be like you're in a, a sacred well. Um, it reminds me of going to like a, a cave style well. Also, if you look up, there's this like ring of trees around everything. What looks to be a waterfall in the background. And then we have this beautiful statue in the center. This deck feels very weighty with um, a lot of tradition behind it. And a lot of the author's personal experiences within those practices and those traditions. Aham Brahmasmi is the next card. And I believe we are still in symbols, but I could be wrong. I think we are. Aham brah Brahamasmi is a Sanskrit word for I am one with the universe. In other words, I am the universe and the universe is me. It speaks to the experience of total unity with the divine and the recognition that we are indeed inseparable. How beautiful is that? And I love this gorgeous like Buddha in the background, the rainbow over top. And this is definitely one of um, the amulets. 15 is flame. This to me looks like the edge of the sun. It's really, really vibrant. Um, and then there's this like flame inside this sphere. It's very like, it reminds me of the kind of, of sacred flame you nurture, like the flame of inspiration. Really, really beautiful. What does she say in the guidebook here? Fire is the powerful elemental force that gives life and also consumes it. In the Chinese five element system, fire represents joy and the Huichol people of the Mexico Mexican Sierra Madre consider it a god form. Fire burns like the sun, throwing off a light so powerful it reflects off the moon and gives us light, even when the sun is sleeping. It gives us the warmth necessary to keep us alive. A flame is what emerges from a spark, from one single point of focus, which is what I felt with this sphere in the center. Uh, it is more than just fire. It is the becoming that happens when two elements come together, spark and kindling, to create light and warmth. When someone works with flame energy, they feel a joyous, life-giving force. Next, we have elements. And each of these cards has a different symbol at the top. It's actually kind of interesting because I feel like those symbols, like these ones are both, actually they have the same symbol. So I don't know if the symbols are unique. I'd be curious um, from Carla what the story is there, but that's really interesting. So here we have all of the elements. We have fire, earth, air, and water all represented in this card. Fire, earth, wind, and water. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. Next we have abundance. Here we have the feathers crossing over. That's really pretty. I love the layers. I love this like um, multi-ringed shape in the background as well. The art of this card shows many rings expanding out from a central point. When I created this design, I meditated about what an invocation or prayer for abundance would look like. I saw a stone thrown into a still pond and the ripples expanded for a long time, moving out from the center to the edges of the pond. 
I then saw an image of a prayer being offered into the universe with a star as the central point receiving the prayer, the light of which extended out to illuminate the, the entire Milky Way. How stunning is that? And th this is what I mean. When you read the book, you recognize just how much thought and intention went into the creation of each of these pieces of art, just as the amount of thought and intention goes into each of the uh, beautiful amulets that inspired these cards. And, and again, we'll talk more about what's included with each entry in the guidebook. I'm just reading the first few sentences so you get an idea of the energy of the card. The double Dorje. Dorje is a Tibetan word meaning noble stone or thunderbolt. It embodies the brilliance of diamond-like illumination. While it, is simultaneously, while it simultaneously symbolizes the indestructible source of power from which everything is born. Oh, I mean, potent, right? The Dorje, like a bolt of lightning, brings the clarity and light of our connection with the divine into focus. It helps us develop the ability to cut through the obscurations that confuse us. The Dorje is like a diamond and reminds us that which is enduring, invincible, and e irresistible. The double Dorje has the additional power to protect all that is sacred and mundane. It is a centering and grounding force and a reminder to honor ourselves and to live our lives with integrity. <sighs> Tree of Life. This has a very, again, a very connected to the universe as a whole, um, and it's, oh, it's very potent. Uh, the Tree of Life. In the design of this amulet, the Tree of Life is inspired by the Celtic cross, reminding us that trees are sacred. They are connected to the earth in the horizontal and the heavens in the vertical. For the ancient Celts, the Tree of Life called Kran, oh boy, Bathad was a vision of the one original sacred tree, revered as a doorway into other realms. Extending deep beneath the earth's surface, the tree's vast root system reminds us to connect and ground deeply into our great mother earth, our home, our source of nourishment. And you really get the feeling of above and below in this card. And you can see in the background, there's definitely that tree of life shape. And then in the foreground, there's other shapes, just creating a sense of connectedness heart on fire i love this this is definitely one of her amulets here and heart of fire says a heart full of flame symbolizes the transformative power of love the root of the word courage core is the latin root that means heart imagery for this card shows the heart on fire amulet sitting on the fore forehead of a jaguar oh there's the jaguar there oh that's cool okay um, I love that she's addressing the artwork too, and I'm sure she does in the other cards. It's just that like I'm only reading the first couple sentences and the guidebook is meaty, you guys. Jaguar is a respected shapeshifter in the indigenous shamanic cultures of Central and South America. For these peoples, including the Huichal people of the Mexican Sierra Madre, the Toltec and the Aztec, Jaguar is a master transformer who walks all realms. In some ancient cultures, he was considered a god. His intense fierceness offers protection and his keen eyesight offers guidance when the shaman is vul vulnerable during travel in the unseen worlds of mystery and magic. Um, and it goes on from there, but wow. Mirror. I love that there's a mirror card. Again, you can read these cards intuitively as well, particularly as you become more familiar with the symbols that are present. Um, but this is, this to me, and please forgive the comparison, but I can't help it. This to me is what the Way of the Shaman or Oracle, um, I think that's what it was called, by Colette Baron reed uh, and counterparts that, that created that deck. This is what I wanted that deck to be and just wasn't for me. It just felt like it lacked that um, incredible depth that I feel like is here. Again, please forgive the comparison for those of you that know and love that deck. I'm sorry, it wasn't resonating with me, but this one is speaking my speak. And sometimes that's like a personal thing, right? Like it's whose language really speaks to you, but this feels very rich. There's a lot of symbolism here. There's a lot of clear tone of respect to all the cultures that have influenced the creator of this deck. And I love that. Okay, sorry, enough babbling. So the mirror card, known in the Tibetan language as a malang, the mirror has been used by traditional Tibetan banpo and Buddhist shamans as a tool for divination and ceremony. As a symbol, it represents purity and equanimity. Tibetan, oh boy, I can't pronounce this, Dzogchen masters teach that one's true Buddha nature is like a mirror. Oh, sacred heart. Look at the swirl and the way that it intertwines. Oh my goodness. In this card, two intertwined snakes wrap around each other, coming together to form a heart that represents transformation and the harmonious union of opposites. The snakes represent kundalini, the spiritual force that resides at the base of our spine. Here, the serpent of two lovers are joined together. Together, these snakes intertwining together to form a third. Sorry, I, I read that funny. Together, these snakes twining together to form a third. 
The being pictured here is singing, one uh, with arms as rainbows and a swirling background of stone in the process of becoming ever more luminous. And it, again, it goes on from there. But I mean, it's just, you can, uh, it feels channeled, this deck. It's, yeah. Sun, moon. I love that they're together. It kind of reminds me of the um, Shiva Shakti card a bit, but coming at it from a different angle. We'll see if the first few sentences give the same feel. Sun is the yang force of fire and light. Sun is the primordial life giver and illuminator who brings growth and the heat of movement into our daily experience. Brightness, clarity, heat, energy. Sun also represents movement. Excuse me. Sun also represents wisdom. Moon is the yin energy of brilliance in the dark emotional realms of our watery depths. Moon is connected with the cycles of life, including darkness. Moon lives in the void and flows between fullness and emptiness as part of her nature. Cooling, feeling, pacifying. The moon represents compassion. Oh. Thokcha? Thokcha? The Tibetan Thokcha. This card shows many things. An empty circle, infinity, zero, wholeness, completeness, emptiness, eternity, timelessness, a womb, cycles, unity, perfection, the beginning and the, and the, and the end. It holds an absence of size or quantity. The Tibetan Thokcha amulet symbolizes the field of ultimate possibilities, the wellspring of unlimited potential and abundance that is the creative essence of our life. Oh, oh come on. The cross... And this looks like an equal armed cross. I don't know if that is intentional or if that's just the way that the artwork is positioned. Symbolizes our lives on this earth intersecting with spirit. The art in this card shows not the cross of the crucifixion, but rather the image of an equal sided cross that is connected to an indigenous view of life. Each side has qualities that are unique to it, such as the east being the place of beginnings, the west being places of endings, and so on. The center represents the self, which is connected to all. Yes. Chakra mandala. So here we have a mandala made up of all of the chakras and um, a pure center of what looks like light. Or I don't know if that's just what came to me when I looked at that. First couple sentences. The oracle card was inspired by the chakra mandala amulet and shows a moonstone in the center that represents the individual. Ah, look, I wasn't wrong. Well, I was thinking light spirit, that sort of thing. And then we're surrounded by the chakras. So pretty. Inner marriage. This reminds me of the alchemical marriage and DNA. Like you can definitely see the bridges of DNA here. That's really interesting. This definitely looks like alchemy to me, um, particularly with the red and white color. The inner marriage um, card symbolizes the mystical and soulful union of opposites, the transformative process that leads to illumination and the realization of wholeness. It sounds like alchemy, right? <laughs> These pairs of opposites are, are sometimes referred to as feminine and masculine, yin and yang, psyche and logos, or heart and mind. In even simpler terms, we can think of them as positive and negative, light and dark, or black and white. The inner marriage represents the dynamic balance of these energies in our lives. Oh, it goes And it goes on from there. The Lotus. This is a symbol that is really potent and powerful for me personally. I'm curious what she says about it in here. The Lotus in Hindu and Buddhist iconography symbolizes the unfolding of the inner divine potential, the incarnate soul arising from the depths of the physical plane to the total enlightenment, enlightenment of spiritual rebirth. In these cultures, every important deity is depicted either seated upon a lotus or holding one in their hands. Symbolically, all the chakras have a lotus as their foundation, depicted in various stages of opening, while the th with the thousand-petaled, fully open lotus on the crown chakra. This acts as a symbol of the successful journey from humanity to enlightenment. And more than that, at least I'm going to, and I, she goes on from there, but I just want to share my own understanding and experience of the lotus is also a beautiful symbol of healing and transcending trauma and difficulty in one's life. There is the mud that the lotus sprouts in and has to emerge from. And there's a saying by Thich Nhat Hanh, the, the thicker the, what is it? The thicker the mud, the more beautiful the lotus, something along those lines. Um, and it just speaks to the fact that the lotus who has had to struggle through the most sometimes blossoms the, the biggest and the widest because it's had to fight through so much. So it's grown strong. And I love that as a symbol for healing. That was what stuck with me in my learnings of the lotus. Om, the universal sound of consciousness. Om is the most sacred syllable in Hinduism, symbolizing the entire universe. This syllable, also known as the primordial mantra, because it is considered to be the first sound that ushered in the beginning of creation. And I love the emergence feeling of the artwork here. And this artwork has a very, it reminds me, if you like Claire Max Illuminated Earth Oracle, this has a very kind of similar with the darkness of the colors and that the really earthy nature -y feel. I feel like I really get that, but with a totally different like theme. 
There we go. Now we're into totems. So these are totems. So these were all the symbols. Now we're into totems. So the honeybee has been a symbol for the goddess across the world and throughout time. She represents the matriarchal ar archetype as the queen bee. Her hive is a feminine community of harmonious service and devoted hard work for the benefit of others. Poetry throughout time has honored the amber colored nectar we know as honey for its awareness and healing proper, excuse me, its sweetness and healing properties. Jars of honey have been found perfectly preserved from thousands of years ago, a testament to the sacred timelessness of the gifts it brings. I mean, it goes on from there about the alchemical properties and oh, but I mean, like, look at this golden. This is actually one of the amulets featured in the artwork here, surrounded by all of these florals and oh, it's just... You feel like you're literally moving through, that's what this, this deck feels like. You feel like you're sort of moving through a spiritual, a garden made of spirit, if that makes any sense. Um, and just visiting these different special places and themes and ideas. It's just, ugh. The hummingbird is next. And I love the silhouette of the hummingbird here and this feeling you get of like seated hummingbirds. And it's just like this pool of water over here. I love all the line work in the background. So she says, hummingbird goes straight for the sweetness, up, down, backwards, and forwards, hovering as she drinks. She has mighty wings for rapid movement because she doesn't walk. And though the tiniest of the bird kingdom, she is the most versatile flyer. Hummingbirds are territorial, but playful in their antics. More lovers than warriors, they embody childlike delight in the game of chase. And in the end of the day, they drink the nectar together. Oh, I love that. Okay, sorry. I just love that whole, at the end of the day, they drink the nectar together. What a beautiful message. Oh, and for, e oh, I can't, I'm like literally speechless, which you guys know does not happen all that terribly often. All right, so now we have owl. And I love that this feels like a spiritual representation of owl. It's not just like, hi, here's a picture of an owl. There's like a little more happening here. And I appreciate that. Owl understands and revels in the great mystery. Her eyes hold the secrets of the night. She flies through the darkness, silent, all knowing. Raven. Raven is wise. Raven is clever. To many indig indigenous North American tribes, he is altern alternatively a creator, a trickster, and a messenger between humans and the gods. He helps us see in the depths of mystery and learn from our mistakes. Raven teaches us mystical lessons and how to fly from the tops of mountains through stormy weather, heat, and wintry dawns. He flies in solitude. He plays in pairs. He is wilderness itself and the contemplation of all life that happens there. I love that we have what looks to be also... We have raven up here and it looks like you could see a potentially a dark raven but also a white raven it also looks like we see um a fox and a a deer or an elk here in the background as well so it's a very like wild setting i love that and then we have deer this image is one of my favorites from the entire deck i love the pops of yellow in the foreground and it's like blending into the earth deer silhouette we get in the background it's just gorgeous around the world deer symbolize spirit and the magical powers of nature in hindu mythology sarasvati the goddess of learning takes the form of a red deer in the shinto tradition deer are considered a messenger to the gods she is held especially sacred to artemis greek goddess of the natural world as one of her most powerful and beloved allies in tibetan buddhism deer is the messenger of universal love and compassion and she represents the first wisdom initiation of the buddha the deer is a symbol of the great spirit to many indigenous americans and for the huichal people of the mexican sierra madre he is one of their principal deities named kayamari Kayumari, um, he leads shamans on their visionary path and teaches them how to gain their special knowledge. Regardless of your background, deer can guide humans deep into the forest and connect us with wilderness, gentleness, and attunement to the environment. And it goes on from there. I mean, it's just beautiful. And you can tell that this creator has a deep respect for all of the cultures that have inspired her throughout her own personal practices and lifetime. And I appreciate the deep reverence with which she comes at these topics. It's clear that she tries to share as much I mean, even in just the first few sentences of the symbolism of each of these cards, she's trying to share as much background as she can for where these symbols come from and how what have inspired her about them. And I think that's really beautiful. And again, there's like a lot. Again, I'll show you some sample entries from the guidebook when we're done flipping through the cards, but there's just a lot of, there's a lot of respect um, that she's put into this creation. And I really appreciate that. So next we do have Jaguar. There were some comments about Jaguar in an earlier card, but I'm gonna read the first few sentences. Jaguar is a mystical lone hunter with no, with no predator except humans. Meeting Jaguar inspires fierce respect and awe. Their markings act as a camouflage and they travel through the night, some say through the realms, while rarely seen. Jaguar showcases lithe strength, 
silent movement, and powerful jaws and claws. Their jungle domain is large and deep, and they guard them this with ferocity. To many cultures sharing space with jaguars, they are considered powerful visitors from the spirit realms. I love this, like, close-up um, view of, of jaguar. Next, we have wolf eagle goddess. This seems like um, a really interesting figure here. I love the rainbows coming down. You definitely see wolf. You definitely see eagle. You definitely see goddess. The wolf eagle goddess amulet represents the powerful free natured feminine. She fully embodies an alignment with her instincts, even in the darkest of nights and in the wildest of environments. She is guided by her intuition, always aware of her tribe or family and courageous in protecting it. Wolf eagle goddess has the ability to see from the from the widest perspective and to take in the full picture. Her advice and guidance comes from a natural expression of leadership and wisdom. And it, I mean, again, it goes on from there. And now we have bear eagle goddess. So this was wolf eagle goddess. And now we have bear eagle goddess. Dragon phoenix. That's a cool alchemy of energies because phoenix to me is very much about rebirth and regeneration and evolution and dragon has a lot of that same sort of fiery energy she says dragon symbolizes a mastery of the elements and primordial power the medicine they bring is one of transformation courage and wisdom as the guardians of ancient treasures they carry with them the promise of great abundance and mystery they provide fierce and loyal protection and bring a hefty dose of magic to whomever meets them and wins their allegiance so now we're into archetypes ganesh the elephant-headed Hindu deity Ganesh represents Om, the first sound from which all manifest reality was born. Ganesh is much loved as the lord of good fortune who bestows prosperity and abundance. He is also worshipped as the remover of obstacle and the lord of new beginnings. It is because of these attributes that he is greatly revered and his grace is invoked before all important events and undertakings. Lakshmi Lakshmi is the Hindu goddess of light, purity, and abundance. She embodies spiritual wisdom and attracts luck, prosperity, and fertility. For her devotees, Lakshmi represents perfection and a state of refinement that transcends the material world. Her name in Sanskrit is synonymous with having an aim or an objective. Because Lakshmi's sacred purpose is to uplift human beings, she is often shown bestowing coins of prosperity with an owl as her vehicle or flanked by elephants that symbolize her royal power. The lotus she holds in her hand symbolizes the fertile gro growth of organic life, the purest blossom arising from the murkiness of the swamp. This represents her power to help us transform the muddy depths of our experiences into abundance and beauty. So it sounds to me like she's like the, the supporter of that lotus work I was talking about earlier. Artemis. The word Artemis means uninjured, healthy, or excuse me, Ar Artemis means uninjured, healthy, or vigorous. She was goddess of the hunt in ancient Greek cultures and heralded for her purity, protection, and swift action. She is authentic, powerful, and whole unto herself. Next, we have white buffalo. Kuan Yin. Kuan Yin is a goddess of compassion. I love that she's in this deck. Medicine Buddha. Oh, that's an interesting specific aspect of the Buddha that I'm not sure I'm as familiar with. So she says, Tibetan Buddhas consider the Medicine Buddha to be the most powerful deity for healing and awakening the innate curative wisdom that lies within every one of us. Oh, Yabyum. That's a fun word. Yabyum. Yabyum. I just want to keep saying it. Yabyum. I'm probably not even saying it right. Yabyum literally means father and mother in Tibetan. So again, we have that sort of dichotomy, the um, melding of opposites like we have with intermarriage, Shiva Shakti. Um, here we have Yabyum is the depiction of the male Buddha, compassion, and his female consort, wisdom, joined together in the ecstasy of sexual union. Additionally, for Vajrayana Buddhists, the enlightened masculine represents skillful means and relative truth, while insight and ultimate truth are representative of the enlightened feminine. Pictured together, this icon iconography is a multidimensional and powerful symbol that represents the state of perfect transcendent union and spiritual attainment. The image in, in the oracle card depicts Buddha and consort together in ecstatic embrace, a light emanating from their bodies. Oh, I love that. That's so beautiful. 
Vajra Yogini. This is a very like primal sort of fiery energy and I hope that lines up with the meaning or I'm going to feel dumb. Vajra Yoni is a tantric Buddhist deity also known as the great bliss queen that works. The completely manifesting lady, the consort of all the Buddhas, sources of all Dakinis and the mother of all the mother of all the Buddhas. Buddhas. Um, so the consort of all the Buddhas, the mother of all the Buddhas, the source of all the Kinis. Okay, I had to read that twice. She is the feminine manifestation of divine wisdom and represents the very ground of being. She is the consort of Chakra Smavara <laughs> and shares his expression of true compassion. She is the embodiment of creative Kundalini energy and her realization is fearless. She does look fearless. As the divine feminine, she is pure energy and beyond limitation. So very primal, very like root chakra, but powerful really potent and you can see there's this like one foot dancing sort of silhouette happening in the card really pretty next we have durga the word durga in sanskrit means fortress a protected or invincible place that is difficult to reach another name for durga is durga tinashini which means the one who eliminates suffering also referred to as Mahamaya, the great mother of the universe, or as the Ma Durga by her devotees. She is the fiercely protective mother goddess of unrivaled power. Goes on from there, but oof, she's got some, some big energy. Kali Yantra. Kali Yantra. That's, I love this like lotus. That And there's like almost like what looks like lightning coming out of it, which, Yeah. A yantra is, the is an ancient tantric geometric symbol depicting the body of the divine for use in meditation. The Kali yantra, yantra represents Kali, the Hindu goddess of time, and contains the power of action, breath, and transformation. It holds within it the divine transformative energy of change. Oh, and the lightning bolt makes perfect sense, does it not? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Lilith, look at this. Oh. There's something so beautifully potent and eclectic about this, and I love it so much. Um, Lilith is the darkest of nights. In astrological terms, she is the dark moon or black moon, which is not an actual phase of the moon, but the absence of her face in the night sky. Lilith is the face of the fiercely authentic divine feminine. She is one of the oldest representations of a goddess. Dating from Sumerian and Babylonian times, she is featured in Kabbalist texts because she arose from chaos. Described in the form of beautiful woman from the waist up and burning fire from the waist down, she is the energy of the free and feral woman who is uncompromisingly true to her own nature. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps. The Eye of Horus. All potent symbols, all potent archetypes. I'm just, oh, it's... Yeah. The Eye of Horus, also named the Whole One or the All-Seeing Eye, was a powerful symbol for ancient Egyptians. It has been used for thousands of years as a protective amulet and is believed to have great healing powers. Horus was a sky god whose eye were, eyes were said to be the sun and the moon. In one myth, Horus made a gift of his moon eye to Osiris to help him rule the underworld. Osiris ate the eye and was restored to life. As a result, the Eye of Horus became a symbol of life and resurrection. Now we have Isis. Isis, the most powerful and revered Egyptian goddess, is the mistress of words of power and a goddess of nature and healing. She rules fertility and motherhood and the gateways of death and rebirth, the first daughter of the earth and the sky, born on the first day of creation. She is the embodiment of magic, the winged goddess of the wind and the patron of hawks, crows, snakes, scorpions, doves, and vultures. Her reflection in the night sky is the constellation Sirius. Connected to every other goddess, she encompasses the elements of earth, water, air, and ground that birthed the world. La Virgen de Guadalupe. The story of La Virgen de Guadalupe, Guadalupe, a symbol of hope and faith to so many, is multi-layered and rich with meaning. She first appeared as a brown woman with sunbeams surrounding her to an indigenous Nahatl man on, on Tipayac, a sacred mount devoted to the Aztec mother goddess Tanantzin. In Aztec mythology and among the present-day Nahuas, Tamantzin is also known as Mother Earth. Her symbols are soil and light an ancient mother figure, forever nurturing all people and living beings that dwell in and on the land. Tanatsen is the life and light of the world. Her sacred home on Tapayak was believed as to, to be the birthplace of all life and all things. By appearing in this sacred land to an indigenous man, many think of La Virgen de Guadalupe and Tanatsen uh, as one and the same. It goes on and on from there. Oh, I mean, the gold and the, yeah. And the Vesica Pisces. I know the symbol. I love the symbol. Um, let's see what she says about it. 
The ancient image of the Vesica Pisces represents the primordial womb of the divine feminine. Yes, the beginnings of creation as shown by the intersection of two circles that symbolize the world of spirit joining the world of matter. It is the root of the tree of life symbol and when turned horizontally, it diagrams the vulva of the excuse me, of the great goddess. I'm losing my voice. Oh my goodness. This primordial image has been considered symbolic of both a fish bladder, which in ancient times was symbolic of the goddess Venus and a womb, the opening through which all life emerges. And it goes on from there. I mean, it, there is no skimping on the um, descriptions or the write-ups in the book at all. All right, let's zoom out. Got my book here. Got all the stuffs. Okay. So really, really pretty. So I'm pretty sure that this deck um, is the same cardstock and GSM as what you're going to get with the Kickstarter. The only difference being that there will be some um, spot gloss highlights on one side of the card. I again, I don't know if it's going to be the back or somewhere on the front of the artwork. Um, and there will be a edging on the deck as well that is um, going to be a deep chocolate brown with gold glitter or, or with gold. I forget how I described it in the beginning. <laughs> I almost feel a little bit, it's a little bit weighty, this deck. It reminds me, as far as the amount of, of weight and thought, it reminds me a lot of the Weaver Oracle. Like, if you appreciate the depth in the Weaver Oracle, I feel like this is similarly full of story and richness um, and teachings and culture, and I love that about it. Um, we're going to dive into the book, but I just want to do a little shuffle, and we'll draw one card, because I think I'll read one full entry of one card that we draw. So let's just do that. All right. Lotus, of course. All right, so let me pull up the Lotus entry and then I'll show you what you can expect for each of the entries because they're all similarly um, in depth. Okay, so here we have the entry for Lotus. This is in um, the manuscript, so it will be different when it's in a printed book, of course. So at the beginning of every entry, you have a little thumbnail image of the artwork that you see here. Then you have um, a couple of really interesting things to start out with. So first of all, a little um, kind of mantra or poem, blossoming am I, rising am I, unfolding am I. And that sounds like a mantra to me. Then you have element wood, growth and perseverance, penetrating and emerging. Under symbolism, there's a quote. It says, and the day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud became more painful than the risk it took to blossom. Beautiful. And again, this is a manuscript, so this is not completed. Um, there's still editing and all kinds of stuff that has to happen with my copy. It says, the lotus in Hindu and Buddhist iconography symbolizes the unfolding of the inner divine potential, the incarnate soul, arising from the depths of the physical plane to the total enlightenment of spiritual rebirth. Now, I shared this before, but I want you to see the amount of information you get per card. So I was reading the first few sentences on every entry as we went through most entries. I didn't read them all, but I read most of them. And that continues on and it continues to describe what you see in the artwork. And this is something that's really important to me. I really appreciate when artists of decks actually go into detail about what you see in the card, what the artwork shows and what it represents. It means so much. Then she goes into an oracle section. So she talks about the message. So drawing this card for you means what? And it talks about, she talks about all that in depth. Then in reversal, she goes into a whole other chunk of text about the reversed meaning. <clears throat> And then there's a teaching. So for example, for the Lotus, this card speaks to the arrival of light while asking you to remember the times of darkness that preceded it. Take a moment to remember those times you were in total darkness, in pain and confusion with no idea you were going, when maybe you felt like you were being ripped apart. You survived and are poised to thrive. The Lotus is a reminder that every part of your journey on the beauty way encompasses each and every experience, including hardship, awkwardness, mistakes, and loss. Whatever the environment you emerge from, it contributes to your unique beauty. Your most fully open expression is a complete and integrated realization of self. And then there's another quote. Last night as I was sleeping, I dreamt, marvelous error, that I had a beehive here inside my heart, and the golden bees were masking, were making white combs and sweet honey from all my old failures. And this is Antonio Machado, last night as I was sleeping. And that's it for the entries. So there's quite a bit. But beyond the actual entries, she has an entire introduction. She talks about her experiences that led her to creating this deck. It's actually very well written. It gives you a real peek inside the intention behind the deck, why it's meaningful to her. And I just really appreciated getting that insight into why this mattered. And that was important to me too. When when I say yes to sharing a deck with you guys for 
the, like when I receive a deck for the purposes of review, like I did in this case, I don't want to accept something if I don't think I'm going to resonate with it or if I don't think that it's of value in some way. And it was very meaningful to me to read the vulnerability and the authenticity that Carla shared in her introduction and shares actually in almost everything that she takes part in, whether it is the about page of her website or the documentary that she shares her experiences in or shares that creation of her business in and the things that matter to her. So um, I really felt a lot of heart and soul coming from this deck, which is why I'm so excited to bring it to you. The link to the Kickstarter, which is currently funding at the time that I am releasing this video to you guys, that link is in the description box down below so that you can back this deck if it calls to you, if it is speaking to you. I do think it's really unique in the space as far as Oracle decks are concerned. And I'm really excited to see this exist in the world and to bring this like sort of deep wisdom and really soul-centered energy out into our divination space. Thank you so, so much for joining me for this walkthrough of the Tolku Oracle. Again, please remember this is a prototype deck, so there will be some slight differences with the one that is on Kickstarter. Please do leave your thoughts, your comments down below. Remember, as always, we like to keep it positive in this space and give massive support and love to people who put their creative works out into the world because it takes a lot of courage and authenticity to do that. Thank you so, so much for joining me on this walkthrough. As always, please do remember to click the like button on this video if you enjoyed this walkthrough. Subscribe if you're new here and don't forget to hit the bell so you're notified of all my future content, my videos, and my live streams. Thank you so, so much for joining me and may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye guys.